the ages amen on this third sunday of lent the holy lent we hear the famous parable of the prodigal son right everybody knows it's a prodigal son but what does prodigal mean hmm. what does prodigal mean we say pro we, we memorize it but what does it mean what's a prodigal son or prodigal living anybody knows hmm. wasteful extravagant uh, all kinds of lavish trying to to squander everything that he has this is what prodigal mean it's a remarkable story that strikes really a chord inside each and every one of us i don't think there is anybody who can say i cannot see myself as the prodigal son i i challenge you if you tell me no that was not me everybody at some point in their life did something prodigal or something wasteful in his or her life but we also see amazing love that can cover the huge disparity between the father in the story in the parable and his prodigal son who came back repentant the father's love towards his son never changed throughout this whole ordeal if you would ask the father every day how much do you love your son would not have changed a little bit even though he had done what he has done was as bad and horrible as it is and I'm sure this was the prime motivation factor for the younger son to wake up from this daze. Because sometimes there's a daze or a little fog of sin that we, we find ourselves into. When he remembered how much love his father has for him, he decided, let me get up right now um, and go back home. If somebody... If someone reaches the bottom like that man, he must have hope. Uh, and if some, uh, as somebody said, uh, when you hit rock bottom, the only way is up. If he did not see that hope, he would have maybe did something like Judas Iscariot would have done and that some, you know, killed himself. But he had hope. Let us, with the grace of God, share a few contemplation about the width and length and depth and height of God's love that surpasses all knowledge and human understanding. This is the love that broke the sun back. This is the love. As much as we focus, we put the spotlight on the sun, I still, I beg to differ. The real hero here is the father. And the son did what he did because of his father. And I call it the love of no matter how. Number one, no matter how far. We're told in the parable that the younger son gathered all everything together and journeyed to a far country. It was a far country. He went not just far, he went too far. Physically, spiritually, socially. He took an extreme attitude. He left his home, he left his town, he left his country, he left his family, he left his place of comfort, his support base, his security, his secure, the a net of security. And many times we see or be somebody who gone, has gone too far and left mom, dad, the priest, Abuna, and tells him, please leave me alone. I know what I'm doing. Don't bother, call me. Don't bother, talk to me or tell me what to do. Just the arrogance and pride sometimes that ensnares humanity. I know, nobody tell me what to do. You, by the way, you don't have to go to a very far country to be far. You could be in your own room, but you could be very far also. So it's not, it's not just the, the busy, physically moving out and going to another place. I could still be in my room and be very far and very distant. When I want to come, I'll come back. When I want to come to church, I'll go to church. When I go to confession, I, when I want to do it, I'll do it. Just leave me alone. It's heartbreaking for any parent or any spiritual father, let alone for the Heavenly Father to see one of his children 
decide to do this and just say, you know what? No, leave me alone. Don't talk to me. Yet despite all of this, the love of God never changes one bit. There is no place too far for God's love. That young fellow was too far spiritually, wasting his possession, like we said in prodigal living, we know what prodigal means. What a waste of his life, and not just his own life or his possession, but what a waste of the years of hard work, the years of hard work and sweat and tears of his father. Remember, this is the inheritance. The father divided all his livelihood among his children. Everything he had. This grace, this grace that was given to the man, to the young man, he trampled upon it. Trampled upon it. But still, the father loved him and was willing to give him one more chance when he came back. And sure enough, this was true. Listen to what David the psalmist said in Psalm 103, verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far he has removed our transgression from us. As far as the east, they are almost diametrically uh, opposite, east and west. No matter how far a sinner goes, God is ready to put his sins away, far away. He loves us no matter how far, he loves us no matter how long. We don't know how long the prodigal son was gone, but I, I, I'm sure it took him a long time because he had quite a bit of money. So it took him a little bit, to, a lot of time to, um, it seems he's gone through several phases of, of poverty after he lost his money. But what we know is the father never stopped waiting for him. He never forgot about his son. I am pretty sure, I'm confident, 100%, that it was not by coincidence that he saw his son coming from a far distance. I'm pretty sure that every day, as soon when the sun is up, the father would go in and sit in a tower, a high spot on his house, and keep waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting for his son. That's why he saw him when he was a quite far, while, while he was a great way off. His father saw him, had compassion on him, ran, and fell on his neck. This cannot be coincidence. The fa this father has been waiting for that moment for quite some time. He wasted no time when his son just popped on his radar screen. He just ran away and grabbed him. So is God who is patient, extremely patient with all of us. Um... He's never too busy, never forgets. It's a loving patience to give his children ample time to repent. And every new day, every new sunrise is one more chance and reminder of God's love for all of us. No matter how long. This love of no matter how long. Saint Monica wept for her prodigal son, another prodigal son. His name was St. Augustine, one of the great church fathers that was uh, uh, revered by the church worldwide, east and west. She wept for him and waited to, for him to come back for 20 years, 20 years of prayer and tears and pleading with him and praying for him. Never gave up. Many of the saints of repentance God was so patient with them until they decided to go back to their father and became great examples for us. Time here could be a barrier or an advantage. Could be a barrier if Satan convinces the person, oh, it's too late to do anything. You, you have just done so much, so much bad stuff, it's too late. False. Or you know what, what Satan can say, you know what, you have... Tons of time ahead of you. Just, just don't worry about it, okay? Just do whatever. Do whatever you want now. No, you have so many years. Remember this, uh, this uh, parable of the rich fool. He says, you know what? I'll, I'll tear my storehouses and build and tell my, house, tell my soul to live and enjoy and do whatever you want. You've got tons of time ahead of you. An angel told him, you're a fool. Because tonight you're gone. This moment... 
What if an angel came, came God give you all the longevity? What if an angel came and told you that tonight is the night? What kind of shape I'll be in spiritually? So be careful when Satan convinces you it's too late or you got too much time. Both are totally false. That's why the prodigal son, or the young son, got this gift from God when he came back to himself. When he looked, when he was honest with himself. When he was honest with himself, I said, what am I doing here? Why am I wasting my life? The servants, the slaves back then, you know, that in my house have leftover bread and I'm here dying of hunger. I cannot even eat the, the filthiest thing, the, the food for the pigs. Let me just get up now and do something about it. He realized the amount of time lost and he said, I'll arise now and go to my father. St. Paul exhorts us in Ephesians, redeeming the time because the days are, hmm, these are what? And we have to remember this verse. Redeem the time for the days are? Huh? The days are? Fish Haddarif? Nobody knows? The days are evil. The days are evil. The days are evil. You have to memorize this verse. Redeem the time. I mean, use the time now. Because the days, time lost, is evil. This, no matter how long love, should make us realize that it is time now. Not tomorrow, or next week, or next month, or next year, or next whenever. Now, it is the time to offer repentance and go back to my Father. Knowing the time, remember Christ lamented over Jerusalem, said, you did not know the time of your visitation. You had, Jerusalem had a special visitation of our Lord God Himself, Jesus Christ, God incarnate, were come and knock over the doors of Jerusalem, and they did not reject him. And they did not know the time of visitation. So realize your time of visitation, and don't leave the don't leave him. He says, behold, I stand at the door knocking. Don't leave him just knocking and knocking and knocking and knocking. And said, later, later, later. Too busy, too busy now. I've got other things, more important things to take care of now. Please don't do that. Just don't. Knowing the time and knowing it is high time to awake from the sleep. For now, salvation is near. Romans 13. No matter how far, number one, no matter how long, Number two and number three, no matter how much it takes to bring him back, God is willing to do anything and everything to take us back. To take a returning child back in his bosom. And you have the living proof here on the cross. This is how much he's willing to do to take you back. The best robe is not too much. The ring is not too much. The sandals is not too much. The fatted calf is not too much. All these things are not too much. There is a joy in heaven over one sinner who repents more than 99 righteous people. God shed his own blood for us. For so, to that extent, God loved the world that whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. What's the reference for this one? Huh. John what? 3.16. This should be etched in your mind. And if you forget your name, don't forget John 3.16. If you forget your own name, please don't forget John 3.16. You see it in the sports. and see, That much, because sin is not easy. It's a transgression of God's law. And fixing sin is even harder. The wage of sin is death, and death he chose to accept on our behalf. You are bought at a price. Realizing how much God is willing to do for us is a very important step in our life. Because we realize 
the change he was he has he was dead the change of this man he was dead and now was alive again he was lost and was found even the elder son had a hard time accepting what are you out of your mind telling his dad yeah in other words are you out of your mind are you doing all of this for this they don't even see my brother for you this son of yours he would not even want to have anything to do with him for this son of yours are you willing to do that much for him who squandered all your uh, all your um, all your money with uh, with uh, with sinners and so forth he was so angry that that he would not even step inside his, his dad has to you know um, he devoured his livelihood with harlots, sinful people. It says, yes, this, he was dead and is alive. He was lost, now is found. Many times, it's so easy to rush to judgment over somebody and to condemn them and judge them, but not with God. God gives them the time and gives them so much that's why the, the, the ball is in our court now. But that's why we have to do something about it. I cannot say, you know what? You have to do something now. That's why this is a season of repentance and change and confession. When is the last time you have gone and, 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 and had a, an honest moment with yourself? By the way, no exceptions. Any from children and adults. When is the last time I... I came back to my senses and realized what I was doing. When is the last time I've gone to confession? And, 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 and not only confession, but also to listen to what my father's confession has to say and take it home with me and put a plan of action so I don't go back to, to the same mistakes on and on and on. When is the last time? God is giving us an amazing chance today. He's saying, no matter how far, no matter how long, no matter what it takes, I'm going to take you back. I'll close with a quote, maybe, maybe I've seen it before. When somebody asked, how, asked Christ, how much do you love me, Christ? And Christ answered and said, I love you. He stretched out his hand and died. How much he loves us. To our Lord be all glory now unto the end of ages. Amen.